Three years after the release of Project Cars 2, Bandai Namco released a new installment in the series which was a bit surprising for a lot of the fans as this time they drastically diverted from the same style they had with Project Cars 1 and 2 to a more of an arcadey experience with their newer installment. But the question is, is it really that bad? What's up everyone and welcome to a new video, my name is Omar with Real Gamer Review and today we are reviewing Project Cars 3. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing and liking the video and turn on the bell icon to see more videos like this one. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Before diving into details, let's talk about the biggest change that the series had with this installment. Yes, it is disappointing for the fans of the series making that change as they were expecting the series to continue somewhere along the same lines. So for this part, I totally agree with them. Probably it would have been better if Bandai Namco followed Microsoft's steps with Forza and made a separate series with a slightly different name targeting the arcade fans instead of totally changing their already same established series. Well, since we got this part out of the way, let me clarify that I'll review the game in the rest of this video from an arcade racing point of view to be totally fair. And that's how it was marketed by the developers in most of the trailers. Although the series transitioned slightly into the arcade racing category, still they didn't add a story. It's a straightforward campaign with different classes for each car and as you would expect you are starting from the bottom and earning your way up through winning different races and progressing through the career. There are different types of races like race which is the normal race style, hot lap which is basically a time trial race with a different name, championships which usually contains two or three races with points that you earn depending on your finishing position and the points get calculated at the end to determine the winner. Breakout, which is a new kind of cool addition as you have small boards to break through the track and each board gives a certain number of points which are written on it and there is a certain score to achieve before the time ends. Invitationals and challenges which are events that get unlocked or you get invited to when you reach a certain rank in the career mode. Also added is another category called rivals which are weekly challenges that get updated every week and replaced with new ones unlike the invitationals and challenges which have no time limit. And lastly we have the multiplayer which we will be talking about later on in the video. There are over 200 vehicles and 120 track layouts in Project Cars 3 and most of the cars are locked and you get to unlock them by progressing through the career and earning higher ranks as every other racing game. Most people are comparing the overall experience to Grid but actually it didn't remind me of Grid. I felt it is a mixture of Drive Club and Need for Speed Shift especially because of the helmet cam that reacts almost identically to shift. As for the car's handling, yes it is more arcadey compared to Project Cars 2, but still it didn't go to the extreme arcade like Need for Speed series for example. Not even comparable to Grid as some people are saying. Grid is still more forgiving than Project Cars 3. I think it is very similar to Gran Turismo Sport handling if you played it before. The overall gameplay experience is pretty good actually and I liked it a lot. How the car handles, different tracks, the helmet cam, but one issue that really annoyed me during the gameplay which is the difficulty. It is just all over the place. In some tracks you can easily beat your opponents on very hard difficulty. This track for example I was playing it on very hard and I finished with almost 9 seconds between me and the second. As for some other tracks it is a struggle to keep the first place even on easy difficulty. It just doesn't make sense to me and I hope they fixed it in one of the future updates. Another feature added which is some basic car customization options that basically cover liveries, paint and rims. You can also upgrade the car with different parts but be aware that if you add too many upgrades it will move the car to the next upper class and you won't be able to play with it in the same class you are in anymore. Also there is an advanced car adjustment that you can do if you would like to play with the car acceleration, gears and handling. The multiplayer this time around has three main modes which are quick play, scheduled events and custom lobby. Quick play will just try to take you to a race online as fast as possible to compete with other players which was not the case with me as it took forever to find a match. And it was taking even more time to load and wait for other players. 
so I didn't bother and just jumped to scheduled events, as I thought I'll be waiting in both cases, at least I'll be knowing what I'll be getting into. So scheduled events are pretty similar to the multiplayer mode in Gran Turismo Sport. They are events that start at a certain time of the day and you have to register in the event sometime before it starts to be able to do a few laps to see your time and determine where you will be placed on the starting grid. There are multiple events you can register for with different car classes and tracks but of course you can register for only one at a time. This is actually the most fun mode that I've enjoyed and it is the one that I would recommend if you want to play this game in multiplayer mode. The last mode is Custom Lobby which basically lets you create the race by choosing the track, car class, weather, etc. This time around the graphics and visuals for the whole environment and car models are not that different when compared to Project Cars 2. But still, that doesn't make it bad, as Project Cars 2 was pretty advanced when it comes to that department. So mainly Project Cars 3 has some pretty decent graphics and visuals. Another thing I noticed is that the damage engine they implemented this time is pretty good unlike some other games which will have minor scratches to the car and headlights after big accidents. But still, with that good implementation comes a very weird glitch. When you have a big accident, the windshield will get really damaged and that won't go away even if you restart the race. You have to totally quit the race and reload it to remove that effect. It's a bit odd, but still not a major issue and probably it can be fixed with a future update. The game has dynamic weather conditions so it can change from dry to rain while you are in the same race and there are degrees for the amount of rain which is a pretty subtle but still a good addition. I didn't notice that personally till a few hours into the game. So basically Bandai Namco did a solid job when it comes to the graphics and visuals department starting from the weather conditions, track and car details all the way to the smallest details. Coming to the music and audio department, actually I was impressed. Firstly by the choices of the menu songs which were pretty good and I've mostly enjoyed listening to them while scrolling around in the menus. As for the audio department, the car tires, shifting paddles or gears and engine sounds are not that different from the previous installment, but still it is pretty good actually. But what impressed me the most was the racing in rainy conditions, especially during a storm. It just sounds amazing. I will give you a small demonstration of the game's sound effects. If you have a headphone near you, put it on to get a better feel for the sound. Before going to the conclusion, here are some minor annoying issues. They are not that big to the point of ruining the experience but still a bit annoying and I hope they would be fixed in future updates. First one is that you can't watch the replay after finishing the race. Yes, this option is just simply not there. Instead, you need to save the replay and go all the way back to the menu and then enter your profile and go after that to the replay section to choose the replay you saved to be able to watch it. And then there is some more waiting as the game needs to load the track again for you to be able to watch the replay. Second thing is that for some unknown reason the car rain wipers don't work in the replays. 
So if you saved a replay for a rainy day race, when watching the replay and camera is inside the car, you will see that the wipers are not working. Although they worked fine when you were playing the race. Also some of the races have some pretty long loading times, although my game is installed on an SSD, which is a bit weird honestly, as other tracks load much faster. One thing to mention also that the game on PS4 and Xbox One struggles a bit when it comes to the frame rates, especially with the races that have heavy rain even on the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. I don't have the game on either platforms, but this was moving around the internet, and there are even some videos on YouTube demonstrating it. For me actually, it kind of makes sense, as the newer games now requires too much horsepower, and both consoles are at the end of their cycle, with new gen coming in just a few months. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I won't judge the game regarding the change from sim to arcade. I know it's a bit disappointing for the fans of the series, but still, the developers since the release of the first trailer, they didn't market the game as a sim racing experience, so I will judge it as the arcade racing it is. The game is pretty good and I kind of love it. Since the release of Gran Turismo Sport, I didn't find any game that just gets the mixture between sim and arcade in the right amounts. The game overall did a pretty good job when it comes to all aspects. It is a pretty decent racing game that I would definitely recommend if you are into that type of games that hold the middle ground between arcade and racing. But if you are just into sim racing, I would say just skip this one as it's not for you. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to watch more videos like this one.